speed paints are loved by some for their unique blending properties, while others hate that the paints reactivate and bleed through subsequent layers of paint. The Army Painter were faced with the difficult task of satisfying both camps and sought the help of three of YouTube's most popular hobby channels. Is the new 2.0 formula a solid improvement or the worst of both worlds? And are the metallic speed paints as underwhelming as some of the promo shots make them to be? I'm Starly from Tale of Painters and I'll find out in this hands-on review. I played around with the new Speed Paint Mega Set 2.0 for quite a while now, which the Army Painter sent me free of charge. I'm proud of making honest and unbiased reviews and I'm not on the payroll of the Army Painter or any hobby company, nor am I any of the content creators that contributed to the design of these new paints. So before I share my honest thoughts on the new Speed Paint formula, I would like to start with a brief recap why Speed Paint divided the hobby community. The original formula Speed Paint was released in February 22 and they were hotly anticipated as they were the first real alternative to Games Workshop's popular contrast paints. The Army Painters marketing fueled the hype as they boldly claimed the paints to be even better than the other one coat paints on the market. And indeed, Speed Paint had a more homogeneous consistency and pigmentation, the flow properties were slightly better than many of their contrast counterparts and perhaps, most importantly, they were more affordable. However, after the initial YouTube hype died off, painters like Juan Hidalgo and I pointed out that dried speed paints reactivate and dissolve when you paint over them with a wet brush or paint. Shortly after Juan and I published our videos, the army painter reacted with a video of their own, providing some advice on how to reduce or avoid reactivation, for example by applying varnish before painting over. To me, it's obvious that the army painter didn't have the reactivation on their radar, maybe they didn't notice it during development, time pressure played its part or they just didn't think it would bother people. For me personally, the reactivation was and is a big drawback still because I use contrast paints mainly as a base coat and layer and highlight over it like with the skin of my spite claws swarm. Or I use diluted contrast for glazing. The gradients on the blue power armor of this second edition ultramarine were achieved by multiple thin coats of Talasar blue. But I feel even if you use speed paints the pure one coat painting solution as intended, as soon as you need to touch up mistakes with your primer color, speed paint 1.0 kept bleeding through no matter how many layers of paint you applied or how long you let the paint cure, unless you added a coat of varnish first, which can be a frustrating experience, especially for beginners. This is why I rarely used the original formula speed paint and stuck to contrast and express color instead, which don't reactivate once dry. Again, this is just my painting style, so your mileage may vary. Despite all this buzz, speed paint was a great success, according to the army painter it was their most successful product launch ever. And I see why. Unlike Games Workshop, the Army Painter offered a fantastic bundle package with the original Mega Paint set that contained all of the original 24 Speed Paints. With this all-in-one product, Speed Paint was able to reach new target groups outside the tabletop community like board gamers who never painted a mini before but wanted to splash some colors on their board game minis. Also, people started to use directuation in creative ways that I honestly did not predict, like for blending effects similar to wet blending. Dana Howe, who was also involved in the development of Speed Paints 2.0, made a very inspiring tutorial about this. And yet, the community has divided into those who welcome reactivation as yet another tool in their painting arsenal and those who prefer their one coat paints to be stable and not reactivating. Let me know in the comments which camp you are. But please, be kind to your fellow painters, remember there's hardly any wrong or right in miniature painting, just different approaches. The Army Painter now had the difficult task of responding to the criticism and reconciling both camps. It was kind of a tough situation we found ourselves in. On one side, people were positively raving about the product and loved it and sent us so much positive feedback. And on the other hand, you had customers who felt it needed to be improved. To come up with a 2.0 formula, the Army Painter collaborated with some well-known painters from the YouTube community, which I think is a brilliant approach to designing products. Gubertown Hobbies, Dana Howell and Watch It Painted were asked to provide their input and even come up with a bunch of new colors themselves. We experimented with new resins and stabilizers because we, at the end of the day we wanted to make a, a stronger bond once the, the speed paint has actually cured. 
Speedpaint 2.0 contains a more stable acrylic resin which forms a stronger bond and is promised to no longer reactivate after a curing time of about 2 hours depending on the environment, which means there should be a time window of at least 2 hours for blending and reactivation. Or shouldn't it? So let's compare the original speed paint with speed paint 2.0. Here you can see me applying slaughter red in both the old and new formula. The shade of red is identical. The flow properties of the new speed paints are also just as good as their old versions, which I can confirm after some more testing off camera. But what about the reactivation? And the answer to that is a bit tricky. The new formula is indeed more stable. After 20 to 30 minutes, I already have a hard time dissolving the paints with a wet brush, which is good. But this also means that the new resin pretty much removes the ability to reactivate the paint for blending. Here you can see how I painted brain matter beige over the old slaughter red and go over it with a damp brush. By reactivating the red pigments and the bleed through effect, this creates a quite soft transition. The new Slaughter Red is completely different. I only let the paint dry for about 20 minutes, but as you can see, the red pigments hardly dissolve at all and the bleed through is almost non-existent. Here you can see a few more samples from the Speed Paint 2.0 range. I try to reactivate the paints after 30 minutes, 2 and 24 hours. For this, I rub the upper half of the bases with a wet cotton swab, take away the paint from the edges, aiming for an easy highlight effect. As you can see, after 30 minutes, yet despite rubbing hard, I could barely get any paint of the edges of the details, though a slight discoloration was visible on the cotton swabs. In some areas, I was able to scrape off the paint, but that was more due to the mechanical stress. After two hours curing time, there's even less discoloration going on, except for a few colors like Tyrion Navy. After 24 hours, Reactivation is almost a non-issue, though I can still detect minor discoloration for some of the colors. Due to the higher stability, I was also able to glaze several layers of speed paint thinned with speed paint medium without previous layers of paint dissolving and smearing. With the resin more stable now, I'm happy to say that the bleed through effect is all but gone. On the lower half of the bases, I painted over with light gray acrylic paint, again after 30 minutes, 2 and 24 hours. Around the 30 minute mark, some of the new speed paints still bleed through light layers of paint like Dragon Carmine, Maze Yellow and Forest Spite here. It's much more faint than with the original formula, but it is still present, at least on some of the more vibrant colors such as red, yellow, purple and green. However, after a longer curing time of about 2 hours, the bleeding stopped. Now these little experiments are all well and good, but what does that mean for practical use? I have to say that unless you paint over with a very light color, you will hardly notice any reactivation with Speed Paint 2.0, and even then, unlike the old Speed Paints, there is no varnishing needed, as one or two additional layers of paint will pretty much remove the bleeding completely. Here are layered and highlighted over Speed Paint that cured for about 20 minutes, and as you can see, as the highlight colors are quite similar, Bleeding is not an issue at all. This is good news for those who were unsatisfied with the stability of the original speed paints, but no matter what the army painter says about a two hour working window, I would say that the reactivation cost blending capabilities that the old speed paints had are pretty much gone. Now, what you can do to increase reactivation is to use speed paint medium instead of water. Here I soaked a cotton swab in speed paint medium and rubbed it over the edges to remove the paint and enhance the highlights. This works better than just using water, but I feel it's still a bit more difficult and tedious to pull off than with the old formula. Maybe some other painter or YouTuber can find a better way to make the blending work. Please let me know in the comments about your experiences. Apart from the changes to the formula, the speed paint range has been expanded from 24 to a whopping 90 colors. That's 28 more colors than Contrast has to offer, and they also feature metallic one coat paints, which are an industry first. I'll share my thoughts on the metallic speed paints in a moment, but first, let's take a look at the color palette. As you can see, there is more of everything, 
plus 6 brand new pastel and 10 metallic speed paints. I really like all the new greys, browns and the expanded selection of skin tones. I made a hand painted color swatch of the 50 colors from the Megaset 2.0 on white primer, professionally photographed under neutral 5000 and 500k light. On taleofpainters.com you can find this and more charts for subtle contrast, Vallejo Express color and dipping inks from Green Stuff World so you can compare colors across brands. You can find link in the comments below. The new speed paints are initially available in the Mega Paint Set 2.0 which contains 50 paints out on April 22 in 2023 with a complete set and metallic paint set following soon thereafter. In summer there will also be a new starter set and a most wanted set which will have all of the original 24 speed paints but with a new formula. Speed Paints 2.0 can be recognized by the label, but keep in mind that most paints in the first production run still have the old design. Further production runs are set to receive the new labels, which also feature more practical naming conventions. Now, the moment you've waited for. Metallic Speed Paints. These are... Something. I was able to test the three colors from the Mega Set, but there'll be 10 in total. So, what are these? Basically, the speed paint formula, but with metal pigments, which means it, it behaves like uh, speed paint, but it's more of a two tone solution rather than the three tone you normally get with a speed paint. I have to admit, I was a bit underwhelmed when I saw the first promo shots, so I was eager to give them a try. Consistency-wise, they are quite thin, similar to pre-thinned airbrush metallic paints. Hop Light Gold is my favorite. It's more opaque than the other two, but still darkens in the recesses. As the paint pulls from the edges, the white primer shines through, which creates a supple highlight effect. It is a quite muted gold tone though, but the complete range has a few other gold tones I'm very eager to try. Broadsword Silver is a dark cool silver, it has less of a tint than the gold. I think it's okay, but not as good as the gold. Taylor's Bronze is more like a reddish copper tone and even more transparent, so I recommend adding a second coat. Unfortunately, this paint has a really weird sparkle effect, it looks okayish in real life, but under my bright studio lights the silver flakes stand out as if the pigments haven't been blended properly. And what about reactivation? I would say it's similar to the regular speed paints. After 30 minutes the paint is very stable and can hardly be dissolved with water or wet paint, but speed paint medium allows you to carefully remove the paint. So what are my thoughts on the metallic speed paints? I think for what they are, within the limitations, they have potential. Would I personally use them? No. Maybe the gold, but not for the intended use. Do you get a better result with a regular metallic paint and a wash and or dry brush? Yes, definitely. But for the target group of non-painters who just want to quickly color up some minis, they are decent. They are quick and easy to apply and if you don't have super high expectations, they'll do the job. Even if you don't think you're the best painter in the world, a painted miniature always makes for a more immersive gameplay than an unpainted one and is something to be proud of. And if you think metallic one coat paints can help you achieve that, then by all means go for it. And with an additional quick dry brush, you can add some extra depth if you feel like it. And this brings us to a summary of speed paints pros and cons. Before I share my final verdict, why don't you smash the like button, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell if you want to see more paint reviews like this. You can also support me on Patreon for exclusive tutorials and resources. Thanks a lot and here is the summary. On the plus side, I like Speed Paint 2.0's wide range of colors and I think that the selection of brown, gray and skin tone colors is more comprehensive than what Contrast has to offer. Speed Paints are very vibrant and as richly pigmented as Contrast and slightly more pigmented than most Vallejo Express colors and dipping inks from Green Stuff World. The consistency is more homogeneous than Contrast, they dry rather matte and they also settle more evenly than a lot of Contrast colors while still darkening the recesses as intended. They're also more affordable in contrast and come in 80ml dropper bottles with pre-installed agitators. More ambivalent, I am about the new formula. The reactivation is reduced to such an extent that it no longer causes any major issues, but it must be noted the army painter did not remove it completely. And yet, with the new more stable resin, reactivation-based blending is very limited, 
if possible at all. So if you like this aspect of the original Speed Paints, you will be having a hard time with Speed Paints 2.0. I'm also neutral about the new metallic Speed Paints, which certainly have their place, but probably not for me. Personally, as I'm one of the people who prefer the inks and one coat paints to be stable, I can see using Speed Paint 2.0 more often from now on, at least some of the more unique colors to fill the gaps in my one coat paint collection. Nevertheless, I still have the feeling that Speed Paint 2.0 is sitting between two stools and does not know to whom it wants to cater to, those who hated the reactivation or those who appreciated it. In my original review, I gave Speed Paints a 7.5, which in retrospect probably should have been more like a 7. For Speed Paints 2.0, I'm sticking with a 7.5, perhaps with a slight tendency towards 8. Now, if you're looking for other alternatives for contrast or speed paint, then the new Express colors from Baleo might be worth a look. You can find my detailed review here on the right, so go and watch it right now. Happy hobbying, and please be nice in the comments.